Hello everyone and welcome to a fresh episode of Soccer Stories. Today, let's talk about an interesting yet a funny incident from the Lords of World Cup. The history of World Cup is decorated with the names of unforgettable stars, famous referees, mastermind coaches, unbeatable goalkeepers and of course assertive leaders. But then football is a team game and the other characters hidden away from the public eye and cameras have played and do continue to play a huge part behind teams in the world's single biggest competition. Today we talk about one such person. Mario Americo. Definitely, his name does not appear in any of the list of the World Cup greats. For sure, he was not associated with the skillful, free-flowing football that his home country Brazil has come to known for. Please do not get puzzled as Americo was never revered around the world like so many of his countrymen. But to the Brazilian team that won three World Cups in 12 years, the impact that he single-handedly made can be in no way underestimated. Americo was a monsieur of the Brazilian team during its most successful period. He started his career when the team was still wearing the white jersey, something which changed after the spectacularly lost the World Cup title in 1950 in an infamous upset at home against Uruguay, since then known as the Maracanazo. Americo's work as Brazil's monsieur took him to Switzerland in 1954. Eager to scout the competition, he went to see what Hungary, the tournament favourites, were doing in training before their matches. He saw that the Europeans were doing gymnastic exercises in the changing rooms before heading out onto the pitch. He rushed back to tell the coach Jesse Moreira and from then on, the Brazilians took up the practice of stretching before playing. Thanks to America. At Sweden 1958, his reputation as something of a natural leader preceded him and he had become more than just a physiotherapist, he had become part of the team. Vicente Fiola, the coach who won Brazil's first World Cup, nicknamed this guy as Pompo Carreiro, that is also known as Carrier Pigeon, due to his leather pouch that he always carried. America would enter the pitch first and foremost to attend to the injured players, but he would also do other things. Fiola from the bench would gesture to a player on the field, who would go to ground as though suffering from an injury. He would send in Americo, who would use his pouch to pretend that he was helping the player, when in fact, he was actually passing on tactical orders. Although this story was originally deemed a myth, it was backed up by Sweden 1958 winner Jose Altafni years later. But his role within the team was not limited to healing and passing on tactical messages. In fact, his toughest job for the team had nothing to do with either. Now comes the most funny and mysterious part. This is also very puzzling as to how Americo stole the match ball soon after the final whistle in 1958. And as you know, stealing a match ball is no easy task. It was Fiola who asked Americo to get his hands on the ball, the one that Brazil had just won their first World Cup title with. Diligent and loyal as he was, Americo ran onto the pitch as soon as the match was over. The security staff chased him, but Americo was too fast and he was also able to reach the changing room with just enough time to stash away the match ball, grab a replacement and return to the pitch before asking for forgiveness for his action. Throughout the entire incident, he had his famous medical pouch wrapped around his waist. It is indeed such colourful personalities like Americo who have made the World Cup such a great tournament, as its unending journey has continued since 1930. What a journey it is. With this, we conclude today's episode. Do not forget to share, like and subscribe our channel Striking Seconds. Stay tuned until we meet again. Hasta la vista.